guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. It is time for another one of my Pearson comprehensive guides. This month, as you can tell by the title of the video, I will be focusing on the Tragus Pearson. As always, this is voted on by my patrons. I'm really excited to be discussing the Tragus Pearson today. It's one of my favorite ones, but it was one that I didn't think I'd actually be able to get. And I'll touch on that a little bit in the guide. So if you haven't seen one of my comprehensive Pearson guides before, I do have like five categories that I go over. The first one is what is insert Pearson here. The second one is procedure and pain. Third is healing and aftercare. Fourth is jewelry size. And the fifth one pertains to jewelry options. So let's go ahead and kick off this comprehensive guide by discussing what exactly is the tragus Pearson. So the tragus refers to the little piece of cartilage that kind of covers the ear canal. It's usually shaped like a triangle, very small space, not always shaped like a triangle. There are some people that have kind of a flat side to their tragus but for the most part it usually has like this little jut out that looks like a triangle but it does cover the ear canal so it is this inner part of your ear right here well it is right here this part of the ear is also closest to your face so as you can see with mine it is right up against the face whereas the rest of the ear kind of sticks out a little bit more the tragus is pretty much connected to the face so where exactly does the piercing go for the tragus it goes through this tiny little island it's what i've always referred to it as it's kind of like it's own little island in your ear, but it goes through the center of that. There's also the anti-tragus piercing, but for this video, we're gonna focus on just the tragus piercing. There's also a surface tragus piercing, but that is closer to the face. And again, I'm not gonna really touch on that one because even though it's in the same area, it's not the same type of piercing. Some traguses, or is it tra tragi? Tragus. Is tragus already singular? Is it already plural? What is it? But some people may notice that their tragus is incredibly small. Hi, I am a member of the Tiny Tragus Club. And a lot of times when people have a smaller tragus, they may feel like they can't get it pierced. And while that can potentially be the case, it's more up to the piercer and what they think they are capable of doing. Like if they think that they can pierce it, they'll say so. If they don't feel like it's a good spot for a piercing, they'll also tell you that. I was certain that I was not gonna be able to get either one of mine done because I, again, am a member of the Tiny Tragus Club. Both of my tragus are done. I went to a different piercer for each one. We can do this. And they both said, yeah, this is pierceable. So even if you think your tragus is too small, it doesn't hurt to go get it looked at by a piercer to see if they think it's too small. If they don't, they'll tell you. If they do, they'll also tell you. But if it is too tiny, it may not be a good spot to get a piercing just because the space can't handle a piercing. So moving on to procedure and pain. So procedure will more often than not involve a clamp. Again, I have discussed this before. Using a clamp is all up to the preference of the piercer and what they are comfortable with. If they feel like the clamp is gonna benefit them more, they're gonna use it. If they feel like it's more of a hindrance, they're not gonna use it. For me, both of my tragus were done with a clamp just because of the space and it kind of helped guide everything. So when the tragus piercing is done, usually it's done from the outside going in, which sounds a little terrifying because you're sitting there going like, what the heck if the needle like goes in? The piercer knows how to control it, so you're in good hands. So keep in mind that the tragus is a little bit thicker of a cartilage than say a helix piercing, but kind of like the conch piercing, like it's a thick cartilage, but it's not as thick as say a rook or a dath doth. But it is up there in thickness, so you may notice that it pinches a little bit more when you get it done. There are also a lot more nerve endings in the tragus than in other cartilage piercings, just because of how close it is to the face. And it does have a little bit more flesh there, if that makes any kind of sense. So you may notice it pinches some. As always, pain level varies by tolerance. Personally, my first one, which was my my left tragus was a six out of 10, just because it's a small space in there. It's a pretty tight space in there. My tragus is pretty small. So it was more so the maneuvering around to make sure everything worked out as opposed to it being painful but just the like hands all in there and finagling and stuff, that's what made it kind of painful. Whereas my right one, which was the second one I had done, was a four out of 10. It really didn't have that many issues. It didn't hurt as much, I think because I knew what to expect from having this one done, like it didn't hurt as much, but it does just kind of vary on your pain tolerance. Like I've already mentioned, because of placement, it can require the piercer to finagle a little bit, which can make it seem painful, but like the piercing itself isn't, it's just, 
getting the jewelry in, make sure everything's secure. And because it is such a tight space, it can sometimes be a little bit more painful. Not always the case, but sometimes. I will also say that it's not as tight of a space as say like the day stuff, but because of its proximity to your face, the piercer may take their time a little bit more to make sure that everything is okay. Healing in aftercare, everyone's favorite part. Much like with any other cartilage piercing, this piercing can take six to 12 months to heal. It's a cartilage piercing. That's just how long they take. This is pretty standard for any cartilage piercing. Six months is usually the earliest for when a cartilage piercing is healed. So six to 12 months is usually a good time span. As with any piercing, like I feel like the aftercare is pretty much the same across the board unless you get to like oral piercings, but just handle a new piercing with clean hands. Handle any piercing with clean hands. Don't, even if it's healed, you don't wanna get germs in there. If you're a side sleeper, avoid sleeping on that particular side. So when I got my left tragus done, I made sure to sleep on my right side and vice versa. As always, I'm gonna go over the saline salt solution that you should be using on your piercings. So you can either use your own or you can use a pre-made one. I myself use pre-made ones just because it's already made up for you. It's super easy to use. You don't have to think about it. So the two options are typically H2Ocean and Neomed. I have gone more toward Neomed. I do like H2Ocean. I kind of like Neomed a little bit more. All you have to do, spray it on the site, let it soak in there. Definitely rinse it off though, because you don't want that salt to sit on the piercing because then that can cause all sorts of irritation. Don't overdo the cleaning. Cleaning it excessively does not mean it's gonna heal faster. In fact, it's gonna prolong the healing process. Twice a day is pretty much all you need to do. Once in the morning, once in the evening, that's what I usually do. If you do notice that it gets a little bit crustier, you might wanna do a third time, like maybe in the middle of the day. But that's really only if you start noticing crusties. If you create your own solution, make sure that you're using the appropriate measurements. So the appropriate measurements are eight ounces of distilled or bottled water. Do not use tap water. There's a lot of bad things in tap water that you don't wanna put on essentially a puncture wound. And in that eight ounces of distilled or bottled water, you are gonna wanna use one eighth to one fourth of a teaspoon of non-iodized sea salt. Do not go over one fourth of a teaspoon. Using more salt is not gonna heal it faster. And in fact, we'll prolong it because it's irritated even more. When creating your own mixture, just have like a clean cup that you can mix your solution in, then take like say a cotton round or even a cotton swab, just kind of dip it in there get the solution on there and then clean the piercing site. Pretty simple. Again, rinse it though after it's had a moment to sit on there because leaving that salt on there can lead to irritation. Not always, but can. And honestly, it's better to just be safe than sorry. You can also use a gentle cleanser, make sure that there is like no scent present, but it is advised that you don't use this as a first course of action when cleaning a new piercing. This is if you just notice that eh, maybe the saline solution isn't doing all the work that it should be doing. That's when you're gonna wanna break out the gentle cleanser, just cleaning it once or twice a day, no more than that, just around the piercing site, making sure you rinse that as well because you don't want the soap to kind of harden on the piercing site because that can also lead to irritation and prolong the healing process. And as always, do not use things like alcohol, neosporin, and Bactine. If anyone is recommending these things to you, run away, run far away. No one should be recommending these three things to you. Bactine even tells you on their website, do not use this on a Pearson. So if someone is recommending that you use Bactine on a Pearson, yikes. And the reason why you don't use these things, alcohol dries out the skin, which is not good for a healing Pearson. And Neosporin and Bactine prevent oxygen oxygen from getting into the Pearson, which it does need oxygen in order to heal. And as always, do not mess with the jewelry, which means do not sit there and twist it. Don't do that. Just don't. It continues to irritate the brand new Pearson, which as always, with a whole lot of other things, prolongs the healing process. If you find that the jewelry that you have been given initially is too long, you can swap it out after six weeks. I recommend you go back to your piercer and have them do it as opposed to you doing it yourself. Six weeks is usually the mark where it's like, okay, you can downsize now because the swelling by that point is usually gone. Another thing that I'm gonna kind of throw in here, just a special for the tragus piercing into the aftercare section, refers to earbuds or AirPods or whatever those little ear insert headphones you may have and using them with a brand new tragus piercing. I recommend not using earbuds or AirPods for at least three months. I know that seems like a really 
long time to not be able to use them. But when you put those in, it bothers the back of your tragus Pearson, which leads to irritation, which, let me hear it, prolongs the healing process right? Do you want to continue to prolong the healing process? I'm going to assume you said no. So I recommend not wearing earbuds or AirPods for at least three months. Some people wear it right away. Don't know how, but some people do. I waited until three months before I even attempted to use one of them. I also just have some over the ear headphones that I really enjoy, so it wasn't that big of a deal for me. But in order to avoid irritating your tragus piercing that much more, I recommend avoiding it for at least three months. Jewelry size in it. We're getting into the fun part now. Everyone loves to think about the jewelry they can wear. So what is the standard jewelry size in for a tragus piercing? Usually it's 16 gauge and one fourth of an inch in length. This is because this cartilage piece is pretty small and I don't wanna say it's thinner because like I mentioned, it's definitely a thicker piece, but because of its like size, one fourth of an inch in length is pretty much all you need. That is once it is completely healed. You don't wanna try putting in one fourth of an inch early on. Because of that, when you get initial like starter jewelry, it's usually gonna be 16 gauge and then either 5 16ths of an inch in length or 3 8 of an inch in length. 3 8 of an inch in length is super long, but sometimes is necessary for swelling. And the final section, jewelry options. What can you wear in a tragus? Surprisingly, you can wear quite a few things in there. The first thing that obviously comes to mind is a labre. That's usually what your starter is. That's what a lot of people stick with. That's what I usually have in mine. It's just a regular old labre. You can also do a curved barbell. So kind of like what you would put either in an eyebrow or in a rook piercing is that little curved barbell. A lot of people like to put that in their tragus. You can also put a variety of hoops in a tragus piercing. You can wear a segment ring, a horseshoe ring, a captive bead ring, a seamless ring, any type of ring pretty much you can wear in your tragus. And the last thing as always is you can wear retainers. So this is just a quick little rundown guide about the tragus piercing. Whether you're looking at getting a tragus piercing or you've recently got one, a little bit more information about it, or you've had one for a while and just kind of are curious to learn more about it. I hope this guy is for you. Let me know in the comments below if you have a tragus Pearson or you've been wanting a tragus Pearson and just haven't gotten it yet, if you encountered any issues with your tragus Pearson because believe me, when I got my left one done, the first one I got done, whew, that one was a journey. This one was great but this one was a journey. So let me know in the comments below your experience with the Tragus Pearson. Special thank you to my patrons. You can help support the channel on Patreon while having access to videos early, viewing patron only content and more. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button wherever it may be, cause I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you wanna know when I upload and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys.